With high expectations and long delays, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus is one of the most talked about smartphones this year and one of the most talked about tech products of 2011. With its HD display, 4G LTE data speeds, and the first device to have Android 4.0, it's set to be the benchmark of Android devices going forward. Does it live up to the hype? This is Bowman here from BW1.com, and this is my review of the Verizon Galaxy Nexus. Okay, let's quickly go over some key aspects of the hardware here. Um, first things first is this is a rather large device, just to warn you. I know my hands make it look, look a little bit smaller than what it really is. And it, it's really large in part because of the display. It's a Super AMOLED HD display at 4.65 inches. So you're really getting a large, sharp, very, very crisp display. Full 720p resolution on the display. It looks really nice. It looks really sharp. I'll try to come in here a little bit so you guys can see it there but um, as you go as we go through the software tour and stuff you're gonna see really how nice this screen really looks it's a joy to watch content on here view pictures just everything looks really good on it there isn't any capacitive buttons on here all the buttons are really dealt with through the software as you see the buttons right here at the bottom for uh, back home and uh, multitasking we're gonna go over that in the software um, tour sort of how that works there for you at the top is a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera good enough for video chat and such you can see it has a uh, nice curved design, uh, the curved display as you can see right there and it's um, sort of thin and thick, it's kind of thin right here but as you go down it gets a little bit thicker especially here at the end. This is pretty much where most of the weight is on the devices right here at this part here. As you can see, we'll put, turn it to this side you can see it as well so you know the angle of the curved display. Right here these little three dots here for, for a proprietary dock connection but you have your normal um, buttons for you know power and, and volume and such and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is right here the bottom right next to the micro USB port. It does come with a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor 4G LTE data speeds, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC support as well too. So this does come feature packed with a lot of the specs that you're, you're expecting with it and the, um, and the connections and things that you'll be looking for. The only disappointment really is on the back here with the 5 megapixel camera. It's only 5 megapixel camera with LED flash. Now it does do 1080p recording and you can see our test video that we uploaded here with the uh, written review at bw1.com. But um, it, it, it's kind of disappointing to put a 5 megapixel camera in here since we know Samsung has um, 8 megapixel sensors and it's just better than what this camera has to offer. This camera is going to be decent but for phones that are already have already come out that are a little bit cheaper than this and at the price range of this is this at it's just very disappointing they put such a sort of a mid-range camera on it on, on it there for you. So hopefully maybe there'll be some hack to kind of update that or something there for you. It does come with 32 gigabytes of storage. There isn't any expandable storage with it and it does uh, have an 18 15 milliamp hour battery. We'll go over how battery life works and stuff in the software tour and see really what what Android 4.0 is all about. Okay, let's start our tour here of Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. We'll start off here with one of the cool features, which is the face lock. So basically, you can take advantage of the front facing camera to unlock your phone. Not sure if it's going to work here with the camcorder in front of me, but we'll try and see if I can get my face in and unlock it. You can find me. Oh, it didn't recognize my face, and if it doesn't recognize it, it'll give you an unlock pattern that you can use to unlock the phone that way. Now they do say you know, um, be careful with using face unlock because somebody could just hover the phone over your face while you're asleep and unlock your phone and, and it isn't the most secure so it's just something kind of funky to, to use there. Alright so this is the main desktops uh, or main home screens for Android 4.0. You have five of them to choose from here. You can customize them around as you want to. At the bottom here you have a, your dedicated quick access, quick shortcuts right here at the bottom. And you can customize those as well too. And since there isn't any touch sensitive uh, hardware buttons, it's all software related. So your menu buttons are right here at the bottom for back, home, and multitasking. And the desktop, like I said, you can do some pretty cool things with it. You can customize it as you want to. So if you want to, uh, let's say, add a widget, we'll do that. We'll open up the new uh, new um, app drawer here and it's very similar to what you see in Android uh, 3.0 Honeycomb. You swipe to left and right now to get between applications and also to get between widgets. And let's say we want to add a widget. We will add something simple as, let's see if we can find it here. We'll add a uh, calendar widget. You just pound, plong, press down and add it to where you want to. And it adds it just like that. You can move it around anywhere you want to. And you can also resize it as well too, to whatever size you want. So if you want like that, or you want to resize back down, you can as well. Oh, let's try that one more time there. Resize down as you want to, to small, to the smallest size if you want to. There, and you want to remove it, 
to simply remove it like that pretty easy there and you can also customize down here as well too so what you can do let's say I want to move messaging over here and I want to put settings right in that uh, the quick access area you can do that as well and you can vice versa bring it back so that's nice to have you can um, obviously change the wallpapers as well too. I'm gonna show you how it reacts to live wallpapers. Because the, the processor isn't too fast, it kinda um, slows down a little bit when you're um, using live wallpaper. You'll see that as we're trying to uh, navigate through, you see a little bit of lag when going between the different uh, home screens here. And um, we'll go ahead and change the wallpaper back here. Go to a, a standard wallpaper, see if we can find a different one here. So we can find the same one. Oh, we'll use this leaf. At least pretty nice. We'll use that. We'll use that as our background. Pretty cool there. And another cool thing is is the easy way to create uh, folders. So let's say you want to create a, a folder between uh, Facebook and Twitter. You want your social media all in one folder. All you need to do is Tom hold down one icon, hover it over the other one, and it instantly creates a folder. And you can move this folder anywhere you want to. You can add stuff to it as well too by just dragging over to it. So if you wanted to add, let's say, the camera. For some reason you can add it over there to that folder and you can tap on the folder you can access each one of the applications there you can rename it as well too we'll call it social and it's your first look at the uh, new keyboard there and we'll, we'll get a little more in depth with that in a minute you can see and now it's called social and you want to remove stuff just drag it right out and removes it and you want to get rid of it for good you can either um, just remove all of it out of there or if you want to Highlight over. You can trash it fully if you want to as well too. So it's pretty. It's pretty neat to have. Another cool thing is the uh, multitasking capabilities as well. Something that they've definitely improved within Android. You hit that little icon there. It brings up all your multitasking, everything that you have running. And if you want to go into something, you simply just tap on it to go into that particular application. If you want to remove it, just swipe it like that, and it closes it out. Very simple like that. And so you can manage how many applications you have running at the same time. I've had up to about, I think about 10 or 12 and didn't notice any slowdown with it. And they're easy just to kind of swipe and you can swipe the opposite way if you want to as well too. So it makes it really, really easy there for you to do multitasking, which is really nice. Now the cool thing here is at the top, they've improved the notification section here. And I have a whole bunch of notifications as you can see here all the way through. And um, one of the nice things here is with the notifications is that you can uh, swipe them away individually if you want to as well. So if you want to um, swipe away your, uh, my Twitter, I can just swipe that individually away. Or if I want to clear them all out, I just hit X and it clears them all out and closes out the notification tray. Also swiping down, you can... Um, access the settings right there so instead of having all the uh, sort of quick access there it puts the settings right available for you within the notification section. Settings has also seen a revamp and it's grouped better in, um, in, a, in a better section so you can easily get to where you want to go. You have wireless networks, devices, personal and system and they're grouped accordingly so you can get quicker access to it. Some cool things that they've added such as data usage so you get an idea how much data that you've used and you can actually set limits on here so you don't go over your data if you're on a sort of a metered plan if you don't have an unlimited plan you can adjust that accordingly as you want to to where you want the warning to be versus where you want the um, shutoff to be as well too and you can kind of get different ideas about these when kind of measuring your phone's data as you can see there you can change the cycle if you want to if you want to set a mobile data limit you can set that you can limit it and you can say oh, I, want, I don't want it to go any higher than one gigabyte if I go past that I want it to cut off my data and it will do that for you there you can also see what applications have used the most data you can see you know, my music through YouTube, speed test, Google Plus, Facebook you can see videos all those types of things that have been using data it gives you an idea of each, what, what each application uses also you can look here at storage you see that we have um, storage. The, the app looks very similar to what you see on um, Android 3.0 Honeycomb. You can you see your total space data it does come with 32 gigabytes of built-in storage. There isn't any way to expand that storage uh, physically, but you can at least see um, the breakdown between apps, pictures, um, miscellaneous, and available. So if you hit the apps, it'll list out all the applications and stuff that you know all to running to what's been downloaded and if you um, hit back here you can also do the same thing for pictures and, and video as well too if you have music on here it'll calculate that and so on 
head back. They did bring out um, one of the things I want to show you back when reset is available for you right then and there. So you can just hit that real quickly. You don't have to dig through the menus to find that. You also have your um, developer options. If you're going to develop any apps for it, you can set those there. Also, you have the battery as well, too. And um, it's, it's, now it's laid out a little bit quicker for you to access it. You can see what's on the battery. It just took it off the battery not too long ago. But as my phone there rings, and as I get a new email message there, we can take a look at what's been using the battery. This shows that it's been mainly the screen that's been using the battery the most. And you can see Android OS, see different percentages. You can see your history uh, as far as network signal and awake screen are and charging and stuff like that to get more information. As far as battery life is concerned, on standby, standby does a really good job here. Yeah, I would say I can get about two days on standby just not touching the phone at all. If you start to use it, um, standard users should be able to get it one day on a full charge. If you start becoming a power user using a lot of the 4G services, you're probably going to want to look for a charger to keep it powering throughout the day there. So just so you're aware of that. And it's really nice the way they have settings just laid out here. And you have quick access to your Wi-Fi um, toggle, Bluetooth toggle. And you can hit more here. You get um, your VPN, airplane mode, NFC, Wi-Fi direct. And you can choose your mobile networks and stuff. Also, some core applications have got updates as well, too, such as Gmail, your calendar, and your contacts. We'll start off here with Gmail. As you can see, Gmail's got a much more uh, revamped look to it. You see more information between each of the emails. You get a little better of a preview. You have quick access to a new email. Search your labels. So you can type, tap right there to get to all your labels relatively quickly. You can refresh your to get new emails. And um, you tap up here at the top. You can go between your different um, Gmail, Gmail accounts that way as well, too. And you can see draft, sent, start items, show all labels and such. Hit the little three dots there, which is a little um, indication of more menu options. You can see more stuff available for you to set as you want to. You see the, the uh, number count as well, too. And uh, we'll open up an email. Since Border Work added us on Google+, Plus, you should as well, too. We'll show the pictures as well. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have any pinch to zoom availability. So it's really just you're just going to kind of scroll around. As you can see, you can swipe from left to right to go between different emails. But that's pretty much how you're going to... Navigate one email, it's just kind of scrolling around if it's too big for the uh, screen there. And you can do, you can archive it, delete it, you can mark it as unread, you can label it if you want to as well. More options, mark is important, mute, report spam settings, and so on. So you get pretty much got all the full suite of Gmail, app, um, Gmail availability to you. And you can swipe, like I said, left and right to go between different emails like that. Pretty simple there. We'll check out contacts as well too. Contacts have gotten the revamp as well. You have your groups available right here. And nice thing is that it's separate now from the phone application. So it's its own little application standing by itself. You have the uh, all your contacts here from you know your personal ones, your Facebook, Twitter, and all the ones from email accounts and such. And then you have your ones that you favorited and stuff. And we'll go to our favorite contact here, Mr. Charlie Sheen. And you get the nice little lead cover photo right here at the top for that person. And it'll sync to their Twitter uh, picture or their Facebook picture. That's what that'll show up. Or you can choose your own picture for them. You'll get their you know, phone, email, anything that you said here. So I can email Sheen at winning.com to find out how to win more. And um, they'll, it'll automatically put the connection together for Twitter and Facebook and such. And you can swipe to the side here and you can see their most recent uh, social media updates as well too, so which is really nice. And we'll also check out the calendar, which has also been updated as well, too. Much nicer look to the calendar. You can see more on the calendar itself. You can see the blocks a little bit better than you could before. Going into it, you can see not only, you know, shared calendars and stuff, and we got our CES calendar all set up. You can see where all your appointments and stuff are at. And um, you can go by day, you can go by week. You know, it's just a lot quicker to get around agenda, as you can see there really easy to do you can create a new event just by simply going like that and type in the information that you want to type in and you can choose a calendar that you want to attach it to as well too okay we're inside the new messaging app here to take a look at the uh, new keyboard that you can see here it's been it's an updated keyboard from the original um, gingerbread keyboard it, it looks very similar to a little bit of cosmetic differences but it does work a little bit better i uh, type on a little bit better than in, um than pass uh virtual keyboards on android this is this, this, I type this, this, twice, this, the song, and you can see the thing, you can see it does a pretty good job of predictive texting and such, it works in landscape, landscape mode as well too, well, uh, takes, this takes this one a little bit of time to get into landscape mode, that doesn't, and, yes, it goes, 
and you get a little bit more room to kind of type around there as you can see also what's cool with this phone is that you actually can um, voice voice text your uh, well, t uh, voice text your uh, message if you want to as well too and it'll kind of update as it goes along I won't wait for you to say the whole word and just stop so we'll try that here by just hitting the little microphone icon this is the song that doesn't end yes it goes on and on my friend some people started singing and not knowing what it was but they continue singing it forever just because this is a song that doesn't end yes it goes on and on my friend some people started singing and not knowing what it was you kinda get the idea there <laughs> alright we're done here kind of get the idea there. It's it really cool that it, it updates the message as it goes along. doesn't wait for you to finish and try to translate. I really like that it has that on there and it's going to be really useful when typing out messages. The browser also seen a revamp in Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. You can see here we have CNN already loaded up here the mobile version of the page. But what's nice here is when you go into the options you can actually by site request a desktop site only by just checking that box and it will upload it will upload the download the download the desktop version of the site and you can see that it does have flash support if you are um, if you have flash installed on here which is nice you can see the pinch to zoom and um, um, tab browsing is a little bit different here you can go to the top here and that's where you get your different tabs you can kind of navigate that way you can add a tab easily like that if you want to and if you want to get a little more private you can add an incognito tab if you want to as well too as you can see there, navigate through, you can X out of them just as easily as that. And go to the main one here. We'll head over to another website. We'll head over to bw1.com, which should be everybody's favorite site. We'll go to bw1.com. Let go. Let that page load up. Brings up the desktop version of our site. We do have a mobile version as well, too, you can check out. And uh, sometimes uh, the formatting doesn't uh, work in the browser necessarily that well yet. You can see where my text is kind of laid out there. Um, but if we uh, try to landscape like that, you can see it looks a little bit better there. Nice. And we'll um, open up a posting here. Check out one of the videos. Show you the flash support. Right there. Swipe up. This should play in just a second. Should be able to load up. Hit play like that. Play right on there. There we go. Gives you a couple little controls there, which is nice. You can play flash content right on the browser itself, which is nice. There's also some um, additional options in here with the browser as well, too. Go back to landscape mode here. And I'll portrait mode rather, and I'll show you that. You can see in the settings, you have a ton of settings to choose from. You can change your general settings within here. You can also change your privacy and security, clear your cache, things like that. It made it a lot more easier to get to. Accessibility options as well to change the text scaling, zooming, things like that as well can be changed around. You have your advanced uh, features here as well. You also have your bandwidth management. Just like I said, if you're on a meter data plan, you can choose whether or not to preload search results or download um, images from a website and you have labs with like experimental features that um, Google wants you to test out but the um, that's the browser in a nutshell really nice um, additions really nice upgrades to it another key feature of Android 4.0 is the improved uh, camera application that's on here as you can see it's laid out um, very similar to sort of a mix between what you see on the tablets and what you see on the phone and um, you have improved controls you can tap up here to switch between the front and uh, rear facing camera easily like that you can zoom in and out just by that slider there you can tap on it the screen to focus it and you can just take a picture by um, snapping it there and there's zero shutter lag so you can do it several times it's going to take a picture each and every time doesn't necessarily mean that picture is going to be directly in focus you also have settings down here as well too for flash you have um, the, your um, white balance options as well, your flash options you have right here your um, exposure options as well too so it's really giving you more options that you would uh, you would expect on, on a camera and it's some, some of the things that you see in a digital on point and shoot camera as well too and you can hit the uh, well, as soon as that goes away hit the menu option there you can change the store location you can also um, 
you can store location in other words if you have the GPS turned on you can store where you took the picture from you can change the megapixel size there isn't a widescreen option available unfortunately so you can only take it in 4x3 um, which is a little bit of a disappointment there also um, down here is where you can choose between um, if you want to take a, a video recording which it does record in 1080p as a camera itself is 5 megapixels but it does have a 1080p uh, video capability with the same zoom functions you can switch to record either in the front or in the rear there and you have options as well here too to have the flash on your white balance your effects you can do different little effects so if you want to have like a big eye effect you can have it uh, the options for it to do that if you wanted to do squeeze effect I know this isn't really the best uh, example of, of, of a picture it takes for it to do that but you can see that you can change on you can change this sort of the different options there as to how you want it to look time lapse you can do that as well too for the video and we'll um, put this back here you can pick your own as well too as far as backgrounds are concerned so you can actually set a background from one of your own pictures in the gallery to be able to put it put that as a background while recording so to give you a lot of options here you can choose between HD 1080, HD 720 and standard 480 resolution as well also there's a panoramic shot option as well too Tapping on that, just hit that button and you just have to kind of take a panoramic shot and it's going to look for you to kind of move around as it takes shots there. This obviously isn't the best example, but it kind of will give you the, the panoramic view of that and it will save it and you can upload and put that anywhere you want to as well too, which is nice. And overall, I like the camera application. I do um, wish there was a couple of uh, better, a little bit of better layout with it. It's nice that it's a, it has a, a basic layout, but I wish it was laid out just a little bit better. Take more advantage of putting some settings here on this side. And I wish there was a widescreen option, but overall, the, the camera application is improved and, is, and works pretty well. Now that you got your pictures all uh, nice and snapped up there from the camera, you can actually edit them within the album. We go into the camera section here, and if you want to choose a particular picture, we'll uh, choose this one here. You can open that up. You can actually choose to share it between uh, obviously different um, sharing options as you can see there. You can also choose to edit and when you hit edit there, it brings up the editing menu so you can uh, rotate this to landscape mode there. You can obviously uh, change different things. You can have different effects if you want to make a documentary style look as you can see. You can add highlights. You can add highlights to it by there as you can see there. You can um, make it a negative if you want to, and you can crop it if you want to as well too. You can choose to try to remove red eye, uh, straighten it, you have face glow as well. Obviously, some of these I can't use within this. You can, you can drag photo to flip like that to make it in the reverse, and you can save it just like that if you want to. And so you have it to save to edit album so it keeps your original photo safe. So you can always um, go back to it if you want to or you want to make changes and you want to edit it a different way that way. Pretty cool. Now that you have your uh, pictures edited and you've taken some video, now let's make a movie out of it. They've included the movie studio that you saw in the tablet versions of Android inside Android 4.0. And you can add content to it just by tapping add there. You can record a video directly inside of it, take a photo, import a video clip, import an image. We'll import some video clips here. We'll go in here and we'll take this one, import that into the timeline, and as you can see, you can navigate accordingly to it. You can, uh, you should be able to add music if you want to. You tap there to add music. I don't have any music tracks to add, but you can add obviously to that. You can um, also crop and trim like that. So you can trim it down. You can add um, transitions as well too, if you want to add different transitions, a crossfade if you want to, to come in. You can add a photo as well, so we can add a photo, we can import an image. We'll go to our edited album and we'll add that image in here. Put that there at the front. And you know, obviously you can keep going about adding clips as you want to. Different uh, things of that nature to add to it. Overall, you see right there, overall on the timeline there I mean. And then when you're ready, you can either, well first let's preview our, our creation here. Do a little bit of a preview. Fast forward a little bit there. Going through different portions of it. Kind of cool. You can add transitions and things like that to make it a nice little movie on here for you. And when you're done, you can actually export the movie. 
and you have the different options of different movie sizes and you have all the way up to 1920 by 1080 to export out and you can change the quality to high if you want to hit export and it'll push that movie out for you you can upload it to different social networking sites or whatever you want to do from do it with it from there Obviously, another big feature of the Galaxy Nexus is the Super AMOLED HD display. We're going to play a 720p clip in here because this is a 1280 by 720p resolution screen to show you how it looks. You're going to see how great the video looks on here. It kind of plays back here and you can see the, the colors and everything. And you get great angles. So you can turn it from the side. You can still see it very well. It doesn't fade out. Playback is very smooth. Colors are nice and crisp and sharp. It's just a joy to look at. When you're gonna be if you're gonna be watching movies and videos and stuff in here, you're really gonna enjoy looking at it on this screen. It really is nice. Definitely a great mobile experience. Okay, we're obviously gonna do a little bit of gaming on here because gaming is becoming an important aspect for mobile phones. So we're gonna see how Android 4.0 does in terms of gaming. I'm gonna play a little bit of QWERTY here. Don't think it's totally optimized for Android 4.0 just yet. As you can see the little splash screen there. But we're just gonna see how well the game plays on the hardware here and within the operating system. All right. Don't worry about a new game later. What's on sale? QWERTY's, I always like using this as a good test for games. So it loads up here. See how nice it looks. You see the nice smooth playback uh, of the uh, of the game here. We'll go ahead and hit play. We'll uh, go back to level one here and try that out. And games load up pretty decent. A little slower than I would like, but I pretty much put that on more of the processor than anything else. Let's see. Kind of already collected everything in this level, but you get the idea. There we go. So the controls are not totally optimized yet for the new operating system, but the nice thing here is that it looks game looks good, looks sharp, looks really good in this 720p screen here, and um, definitely gaming is going to be something really good to have on Android 4.0. Of course, the Galaxy Nexus has LTE, so we definitely did a test here with LTE speeds with it. And um, you can see some of our test results here. And it varied um, depending on the day and time that we did it. Um, recently, we did a couple of tests, and we, we got 7.39 megabits on a download, and on an upload, we got 0 0.66. And then at one point, we got 10.13 megabits download and 2.82 on the upload. And it's varied accordingly. We've got up to 14.4. 14.61 megabits on the download speeds and we've got as low as 0 0.45 on the uh, on the upload speeds but we've also gotten high upload speeds of about 7.13 and 7.86 yeah, and even 8.60 megabits so it varies accordingly depending on what area that you're in but this is just an idea of what the LTE speeds are going to be on the Galaxy Nexus. So the question is is this the best Android device available in the market right now? And the answer to that is, yes it is. Android 4.0 is a great update to the Android platform. It combines what you found on the phone and what you found on the tablet and makes it work on a phone and it does a great job of that. I definitely have to give Google a thumbs up for that. Now, how long this is gonna stay on top is gonna be the very interesting thing with that. There are a lot of devices out now that kind of outpace this in terms of hardware that are going to be looking to update to Android 4.0 sometime down the line. Not sure when that's going to happen. And that's going to really determine how long this stays being the top uh, the top Android phone available right now. Because the 5 megapixel camera, like I said, is a bit of a disappointment there. And there are devices out there with a better camera that could support ice cream sandwich. And also the uh, processor isn't the fastest out there neither. And there's a lot of other devices out there that have a better processor that are going to be supporting ice cream sandwich. So. Now, down the road, not sure how long this is going to be the top Android device, but right now, if you're looking to get Android, you want the latest and greatest, this is the phone to get. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com. Reminding you, subscribe to our YouTube page, connect with us on all our social media um, networks from Facebook, Twitter, Google+, RSS feeds, and our main website at BW1.com. We have a full review with pictures. The link to that is in the description. And always remember to live your tech world in high definition.